Hi everybody. Welcome back to a very hot and windy day here at my farm in central Portugal. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you a project that I started back in May, but only finished recently. As I'm sure you're all aware, the summers in Portugal get brutally hot, as well as actually the spring and the autumn can also have very hot days and you really need shade. Just outside the main door on our house is a decked area, which was built by the previous owner. It's rotting, it's not in a very good condition, but we still have it there and we still use it because it's better than walking on dirt. And I wanted to change this area to have a comfortable seating area covered by shade where we could sit and be cool and not have the sun beating on us. Also the front wall of the house that has the door in it gets very hot. Our property is west facing. So in the afternoon, the sun bakes onto that wall. And because it's a stone building, the stone absorbs the heat. And in the evening, those walls become like radiators. So I want to do something to stop that. So my plan was to have a shade sail that covers the area and put a nice sofa and seating area with a table underneath it. This solution is only a temporary one, probably for about 12 to 18 months. Our plan is when we renovate the main house, we're going to remove that decked area, tile all the floor there, and we're gonna have a veranda extend out from the roof, which will be tiled, and it will be a permanent solution to have cover from the rain and also the sun. This should have been quite a quick job, but we had a number of delays. The most notable one being an unexpected guest, which I will get to later in the video. So because this job ended up being a little bit dragged out, you will notice the terrain and the landscape change a little throughout this. Most noticeably the grass going from lush and green like it was in the spring to burnt out and dry like it is in the summer. So without further ado, let's jump into the project and head back to where I started in May. The first thing I had to do was work out where the posts needed to go, dig some big deep holes for them to be concreted in and figure out where the wall fixings needed to go for the other end of the sail on the house and get them fitted. Thank you. 
So the weather turned pretty quickly whilst I was digging the last post hole. So I stuck it out in the rain to finish the hole as I was just so desperate to get it done. I really wanted to get it concreted in as well, but it was just way too wet. So unfortunately I had to call it a day. Sometimes the weather just messes up your plans and you have to go with it. After work the next evening, I drove to collect our new outdoor sofa and table set. It's a really nice rattan set, which I purchased from a company called Leroy Merlin, which is like B&Q in the UK or Home Depot in the US. I headed back home and then the next evening I started building the sofa. So we've got dry weather today, so I need to seize the opportunity, get cracking with mixing some concrete and getting these posts set in. It's really sad to admit, but I'm actually looking forward to this because once they're in, we can get the sail up and finally get it finished. So it's been an interesting couple of days to say the least. Two nights ago, I was 
at the bottom end of the property uh, later at night so it was dark and as I was walking back up through our main kind of field or pasture I could see something out the corner of my eye in my peripheral and I looked over and by the wall I could see something small curled up and at first I thought it was a fox so I paused it didn't move and I, as I tried to edge myself closer uh, this thing moved and it stood up and again I still couldn't see it properly and I thought it was a fox or it possibly could be a small dog um, I tried to approach with caution with my back turned to not be confrontational but as I got closer uh, this thing jumped over the wall and ran across the property and off into the darkness and I couldn't see it anymore but as it was running off I could see that it was in fact a dog a very little small light coloured dog I didn't really think much of it you know unfortunately stray dogs are a big issue here in Portugal and it's not uncommon to see stray dogs around or have one find its way into your property so I came back up to the house and went back in to continue watching some television with Victoria and Teddy. The next morning we came outside and curled up in the corner next to our newly built sofa was the same tiny little dog I'd seen the night before. As we approached her, she didn't even move apart from her little tail waggling and hitting the floor. She had so little energy and it was visible from a distance that she was in a really bad way and in need of help. So we gave her a thorough inspection and she was very skinny. Her hair was all matted. She was covered head to toe in so many ticks and so many fleas. She had feces stuck all over her rear end, all over her feet and then her left ear was visibly infected. All the hair was matted, it was oozing. We knew that we needed to help her immediately. We began by removing all of the ticks, which took a long time. There were so many ticks to remove and kill. And then we cleaned out her ear as best we could. It was amazing, really. She trusted us instantly and we both felt the energy that she knew that we were just there to help her. I took her to the vet in the city to see if she had a microchip. Maybe she was somebody's pet and she was missing, but they scanned her, there was no chip, and the vet suspected that she didn't belong to anybody. She was a stray or she'd been abandoned. It's common for these types of breeds she is a Portuguese Podengo, which is popular with hunting. It's very common for a dog to be abandoned after hunting season, which I don't think is the case with her because the vet suspects she's one or younger, or potentially her mum was used for hunting, the mum wasn't neutered, the mum had unwanted babies, and they dumped the puppies and she's managed to survive. So the vet was incredibly helpful. She cleaned the infected ear, gave us antibiotics to help it clear up, as well as some cleaning fluid to try and clear out the infection and all the ooze that was coming out from it. We also got a Soresto collar, which is great for deterring fleas. We use one of those for Ted. We also got some tablets to clear up the ticks and the existing fleas, as well as a deworming tablet. The next morning, we gave her a thorough shampoo to kill the fleas and just to get her nice and clean because she was filthy, as you would expect from a dog that's just been roaming for however long. Under vet's orders, we had to keep her and Ted separate until she was better. So we made a temporary bed in our bathroom for her so that she could just sleep safely overnight and we didn't have to worry about Ted's safety or leaving her outside and other dogs coming. At this point, we were really unsure whether we'd keep her or try to get her adopted once she was healthy, as we had no plans of getting a second dog. Over the next few days, as her infections cleared, she really started to come out of her shell. She started to show her cheeky personality more and more, and we just started bonding so quickly. So after about a week, the vet gave the all clear, to have her meet Ted. 
Since then, their bond has really grown, and now they love playing together on their morning and evening walks. It makes me really happy seeing that because Ted loves playing with other dogs. And here in Portugal, it's not like a park culture like you have in the UK, where everybody's walking their dogs in the morning, unless you live in the city. So seeing Ted have the opportunity to play every day was amazing. So, in case you hadn't already uh, guessed, but I think it was glaringly obvious, we decided to keep her, didn't we? Yes. So, this is Poppy. Uh, we called her Poppy because at the time she came around, the poppies were in full bloom on our property, so it just seemed really fitting. She's a cracking little dog. She's lovely. She just wants to be with us. Yes, she can be a little bit destructive at times because she is still very young and, you know, being in a house is new to her, so sometimes she wants to chew things, but generally she's very, very good. She's a really healthy weight now. I think when she first came and we got her, she was around six and a half kilos. Um, now she's at just over 11 and the vet thinks 12 would be a really healthy weight for her. So yes, very, very happy to have her in her lives. Very unexpected, but I think an unexpected gift, you know, very happy about it. If any of you watching have rescued any animals, let me know in the comments and tell me all about it. I'm sure you'll be seeing lots of Poppy in future videos, no doubt. So let's get back to the project. Good girl, good girl. Good girl, Poppy. On one of the posts, I decided to fit two fixtures, one at the top and one lower down. That way, on dry, sunny days, we can have it fitted to the top position. Then when we're expecting rain, we can lengthen the chain, fit it to the lower position, and the rain will roll straight off. So 
So, now that the shade sail and the sofa are complete, it's time to get this table put together so I've got something to rest my cold beer on. Hopefully it's going to be pretty easy. So glad to have got this project finished in time for summer. It's made this area a really comfortable and relaxing space to be just out of the harsh summer sun. And by keeping most of the sunlight during the day off of this wall, it's improved the internal temperature massively and it no longer radiates heat in the evening. We haven't actually hosted any friends here since we fitted out this area, but we're hoping to do that real soon. In the meantime, We'll make the most of it and enjoy it ourselves, having afternoon drinks out here and also having dinners in the evening. We actually chose this table because of its height. It's taller than a coffee table, but lower than a dining table. So it's really comfortable for drinks, but also for sitting up to it and eating. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you on the next video where I'll be showing you around the property and telling you about our plans for the place in the future.